And right now we're in uh, what we call an external evaluation or ex-eval. And that is where one of our Florida National Guard forces is actually being uh, evaluated on the ability to ensure that we can deliver uh, those, those services and that, th those capabilities that we say we can. Uh, primarily that's technical search and extraction, medical triage, mass decontamination, and new to this year is the fatality search and recovery teams. But you can't just schedule a catastrophe whenever you want to practice these skills. Well, you can if you contact Pete Rizzo and his team. I followed along with them as they walked me through the setup of a very carefully designed catastrophe. I've got a crew of seven here. I have two uh, heavy equipment operators that assist us with our resets. Resets consist of moving of large blocks of concrete, moving of vehicles, uh, resetting concrete panels to assist in the breach station. The four stations are confined space and rope together in one station. That's going to be vertical rope work from the outside and horizontal rope work from the inside. What we have here is a confined space entry and extrication of a single victim. Uh, they're using a tripod with a four to one mechanical advantage system to lower and raise the rescuer and the victim out of the confined space. You notice they have Prusik safeties and Prusik mining pulleys hooked to, for a change of direction for the four to one. Another station is breaching and breaking of concrete. So they would bore a hole in the concrete, insert a camera to search for uh, victims or casualties inside of the space. Uh, this is a breaking and breaching operation. Uh, they had reason to believe either from a void space or a report of actual finding a patient in a void that was uh, obviously blocked by a piece of concrete. So they brought in an operation to actually breach the piece of concrete, control the fall of the chunk that they brought out, creating a space large enough for somebody to enter, uh, recon the patient, and also a space large enough that they can bring a patient packaged back out. The reason you see the shape that shape is designed so that a patient will fit through it. A third station would be shoring station using wooden shores to stabilize collapse zones, be they tilting walls or uh, ceiling to floor, stabilize those things. Heavy lift and moving of large blocks of concrete or steel, or I believe uh, vehicles would fall into that category also. Essentially this car was uh, blocking their access point. They had to uh, grab the car and they had to remove the car from location to gain access. They had to put up a temporary shore, and now they're accessing the victim, they're assessing him, and they're packaging him. As far as the equipment outside, uh, part of the evolution was to estimate the weight of the vehicle and pick an anchor that will uh, obtain the mission. We estimated the car to be around 1,000 pounds, but the block is 36, but we're saying with the ground the way it is, I calculated it out, it was like 2,100 pounds to move that block. Uh, simply using uh, just chain and a chain hoist. But with safety always in mind, we try to make it as realistic as possible. We place the victim further back into this structure and we move the vehicle in. Uh, and basically, we made sure that a, uh, an object that they could pick to move the car was in line. We don't actually give them the whole thing, the whole picture, but the whole picture is here. So it's for them to uh, figure out. So the disasters that I've watched on the news, I've started to see for example, in, in Oklahoma when they had the tornadoes come through last year, uh, I got home and looked at the news and I see some of the same soldiers that are uh, in these exercises are now in the streets doing searches in the rubble pile and making recoveries and it just it, it sends it home that this is actually paying off and, and they're able to use the skills that they're learning out here, these XE valves and these uh, exercises. Reporting from Camp Landing, I'm A.J. Artley for the Florida National Guard. Always ready, always there.